The Battle of Ambon occurred on the island of Ambon in the Dutch East Indies, as part of the Japanese offensive on the Dutch colony during World War II. In the face of a combined defense by Dutch and Australian troops, Japanese forces conquered the island and its strategic airfield in several days. In the aftermath of the fighting, a major massacre of many Dutch and Australian prisoners of war followed suit. Chapter 1 Background Chapter 1 Section 1 Geography Ambon is located in the Malaku Islands, just south of the much larger island of Saram. Ambon has what might be described as a figure 8 or hourglass shape, and consists of two peninsulae separated by a narrow isthmus, with long narrow bays on either side of the isthmus. The key airport at Laha is in the west of the Hitu Peninsula, northern part of the island, facing Ambon Bay. The town of Ambon is at the opposite side of the bay, on the southern part of the island, Lay Timor Peninsula. Chapter 1 Section 2 Significance. Despite being one of the islands of Dutch East Indies outlying regions, the Dutch had known of Ambon's strategic importance as an airbase, and had been reinforcing its defense since 1941, adding additional nil troops from Java. Yet as far back as 1940, Australia also saw the island's significance as near stepping stones for Japanese forced to attack Australia from the north. In an agreement with the Dutch government in exile, Canberra agreed to bolster Dutch defences by sending in troops and equipment to Ambon and Timor Islands. On December 14, 1941, a convoy composed of escorts HMAS Adelaide and Ballarat with the Dutch ships both, Valentijan, and Patras carrying 1,090 troops of Gulf Force departed Darwin and arrived at Ambon on 17 December. HMAS Swan escorting Bantam arrived with reinforcements on 12 January 1942 remaining through raids on 15 to 16 December until 18 December. Chapter 2 Order of Battle Chapter 2 Section 1 Japan Chapter 2 Section 1 Subsection 2 Ground Forces Eastern Detachment Units under Direct Command Eastern Detachment HQ 1 Squad of the 38th Divisional Signal Unit 3rd Company of 23rd Anti-Aircraft Artillery Regiment 1st Company of 44th Field Anti-Aircraft Artillery Battalion 1 Independent Engineer Company 38th Divisional 1st Field Hospital 1 Platoon of the 38th Transport Regiment Left Assault Unit 228th Infantry Regiment HQ 1 Platoon of 3rd Company 4th Company 228th Infantry Regiment Signal Unit 38th Divisional Signal Unit Main Strength of the 38th Divisional Medical Unit Right Assault Unit 2nd Battalion 1 Squad of the 228th Infantry Regiment Signal Unit 4th Company of the 38th Mountain Artillery Regiment 3rd Company of the 38th Engineer Regiment 1 Squad of the 38th Divisional Signal Unit 2nd Battery of the 2nd Independent Anti-Tank Gun Battalion Element of the 38th Divisional Medical Unit 1st Kure Special Naval Landing Force 10th Company of the 228th Infantry Regiment Chapter 2 Section 1 Subsection 3 Naval Forces Eastern Attack Unit Support Unit 5th Cruiser Division 6th Destroyer Division 1st Base Unit Patrol Boats P-34 21st Minesweeper Division 1st Submarine Chaser Division 15th Destroyer Division 16th Destroyer Division 2nd Escort Unit 2nd Destroyer Squadron 8th Destroyer Division Air Group 2nd Air Unit 11th Seaplane Division Patrol Boat P-39 Transport Unit 1st Echelon 
Second Echelon. Chapter 2 Section 2, Netherlands. Moluccan Brigade. Molucca's Garrison Battalion. First Company under Captain H. A. de Jong Swimmer. Second Company, under Captain E. P. Bauman. Third Company, under Captain A. G. M. Schuten. Fourth Company, under Captain J. Kaska. Fifth Company, under First. Lieutenant, W. A. Blaubor. Machine Gun Company under First Lieutenant F. E. H. de Jong. Five sections of 2x Vickers machine guns, three sections of 4x 80mm mortars, 2x 20mm anti-tank guns, 4x 7.7mm A machine guns. 4x over Valwagen armored cars. Detachment baller under 1st Lieutenant Raden D.D. Cartasismeter. Four brigades of CA. 15 men? Reserve Corps Oud Militaren, RK. Two companies. Depot Battalion Native Militia. CA? 300 men. Home and Country Guard. Home Guard stationed in the cities, Country Guard in the countryside. Artillery. 450 men. Coastal Artilleries. One battery of 4x 150mm length.40 gun under reserve 1st Lieutenant TLD count. 2 by 75mm length.55 gun. 2 by 37mm gun. Field artilleries. Two batteries of 4x 75mm length.30 guns each under 1st. Lieutenant P. Jaeger Jerlings. 4 by 70 mm length.14 gun. A artilleries. Two sections of 2x 40 mm A guns. Three sections of 3x 12.7 mm A machine guns. Engineer Detachment. Chapter 2 Section 3, Australia. Gulf Force. Gulf Force HQ. 221 Battalion. Sea Troop of the 18th Australian Anti-Tank Battery. One section of the 211th Australian Field Company. One detachment of the 23rd Australian Infantry Brigade Signals Section. One section of the Australian Army Service Corp. One detachment of the 212th Australian Field Ambulance. 23rd Australian Dental Unit. 104th Australian Light Aid Detachment. One detachment of the Canteen's Services. One detachment of the Intelligence Corps. Chapter 2 Section 4, United States. Patrol Wing 10, 8 Consolidated PBY Catalina. Chapter 3, Pre-Battle. Chapter 3 Section 1, Allies. Chapter 3 Section 1 Subsection 2 Infantry At the outbreak of war on 8 December, Ambon was garrisoned by the 2,800-strong Moluccan Brigade of the Royal Netherlands East Indies Army Garrison, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Coppets and consisting of Indonesian colonial troops, under European officers. The garrison was poorly equipped and trained, partly as a result of the Netherlands having been defeated and occupied by Nazi Germany. The NIL units were not equipped with radios and relied on landlines and written communications. They included 300 partly trained reservists. The Australian Army's 1,100 strong Gulf Force, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Leonard Roach, arrived on 17 December. The force consisted of the 221st Battalion from the Australian 8th Division, as well as some divisional artillery and support units. Coppets was appointed Allied Commander on Ambon. Roach had visited the island before Gulf Force's deployment and requested that more artillery and machine gun units be sent from Australia. On 6 January, after Dutch and British territories to the north fell to Japan, Ambon came under attack from Japanese aircraft. Roach complained about the lack of response to his suggestions, 
and as a result he was replaced by Lieutenant Colonel John Scott on 14 January. Kopitz's headquarters was at Harlong, between Paso and the town of Ambon. It included four armored cars, an anti-aircraft machine gun detachment and four 40mm A guns. In the belief that the terrain on the south coast of Leyte Timor was too inhospitable for landings and that any attack was likely to be in the east, around the Bay of Baguala, the NIL forces were concentrated at Paso, near the Isthmus, under Major HHL Thailand. There were small NIL detachments at likely landing places in the north of Hitu. Two companies of the 221st Battalion and 300 Dutch troops were at Laha Airfield, under the command of Major Mark Newbury. They were accompanied by Dutch artillery, 475mm field artillery pieces, 437mm anti-tank guns, 475mm anti-aircraft guns, 440mm A guns, an A machine gun platoon and an A machine gun battery. However, Lieutenant Colonel Scott, Gulf Force HQ and the remainder of the Australian troops were concentrated in the western part of Leyte Timor Peninsula, in case of an attack from the Bay of Ambon. A company of the 221st and 1 Nil Company were stationed at Eri, on the southwest side of the bay. The 221st Battalion's Pioneer Platoon was on the plateau around Mount Nona, with a Dutch anti aircraft machine gun detachment. Smaller Australian detachments were at Latualat, near the southwestern tip of Leyte Timor and at Cape Batuanjat, just north of Erie. Dual Force HQ and a Strategic Reserve, D Company, were located on a line from the Nona Plateau to Amahusu Beach, between Erie and the town of Ambon. Chapter 3 Section 1 Subsection 3 Air Forces The Allies had few aircraft to spare. The Nil Air Service sent No. 2 Flight, Group 4 from Java to Laha. Of an original four Brewster Buffaloes, two crashed en route to Ambon. The Royal Australian Air Force sent two flights, comprising 12 Lockheed Hudson Mk2 light bombers, from No. 13 and No. 2 squadrons, to the area, under Wing Commander Ernest Scott. One flight was based at Laha, and another was sent to Namali on the neighboring island of Buru. The U.S. Navy's Patrol Wing 10, with consolidated PBY Catalinas, was based at the Harlong Seaplane Station from 23 December. Wing headquarters moved to Java on 9 January, but American Catalinas mounted patrols from Harlong until 15 January when an air raid destroyed three patrol aircraft and damaged several others. The Allies then abandoned the base as it was too exposed. The Wing's seaplane tenders supported patrols, but left after the 8th of January. Tender-based patrols from USS William V. Preston and USS Heron at Anchorages further south continued until 5 February. The Royal Netherlands Naval Air Service flew patrols from Ambon slash Harlong, GVT-17 with Catalina flying boats continued from the start of war through the 14th of January, when it was ordered to Java. U.S. Navy and RAF aircraft made several very dangerous evacuation flights into Ambon slash Laha, in the last days of January. Chapter 3 Section 1 Subsection 4 Naval Forces HNLMS Howden Leu, a Royal Netherlands Navy Minilea, left Ambon in early January, after mining approaches to the island. By mid-January, the minesweeper USS Heron was the only Allied combat ship at Ambon. Chapter 3 Section 2, Japan The second carrier division was assigned to support the operation. Two aircraft carriers, the Hiryu and the Soyu, attacked Ambon on 24 January 1942. They launched 54 aircraft and bombed port facilities and buildings on Ambon. No losses were sustained. The carrier fleet returned to Davao, Philippines on 25 January 1942, prior to the invasion on 30 January 1942. Chapter 4, Battle Chapter 4 Section 1, The 30th of January From 6 January onward, Ambon was attacked by Japanese aircraft. Allied aircraft made some sorties against the approaching Japanese fleet, with little success. On 13 January, 
The two Brewster Buffalo fighters, piloted by Lieutenant Browers and Sergeant Blands, attacked a flight of 10 Mitsubishi A6M0 fighters. Browers' aircraft was hit and caught fire, but he continued to attack until it became uncontrollable, at which point he abandoned the Buffalo, using his parachute and landed in the sea. Blands was also shot down but also managed to use his parachute, landing in trees on Ambon. Both men were rescued. Browers suffered severe burns and Blands had 17 different wounds. The naval aviation base at Harlong was soon rendered unusable by Japanese air raids, and was abandoned by the Dutch and US navies in mid-January. On 30 January, about 1,000 Japanese marines and IJA personnel landed at Hitulama on the north coast. Other elements of the 228th Regiment landed on the southern coast of the Leitimor Peninsula. Although the Japanese ground forces were numerically not much bigger than the Allies, the Japanese had overwhelming superiority in air support, naval and field artillery, and tanks. The remaining Allied aircraft were withdrawn that day, although RAF ground staff remained. Within a day of the Japanese landings, the Dutch detachments in their vicinity were overrun and or had withdrawn towards Paso. The destruction of bridges on Hitu, was not carried out as ordered, hastening the Japanese advance. There was a second wave of landings, at Hutumori in southeastern Leyte Timor, and at Bachigong, near Paso. An Australian infantry platoon was detached to reinforce the pioneers on Nona Plateau. The defences at Paso had been designed to repel attacks from the north and west, and now faced assault from the south. A nil platoon was detached from Paso to resist the attack on Bachigong, causing a gap in the Dutch lines. The Japanese took advantage of this, and were assisted by the failure of a nil telephone line. Chapter 4 Section 2, The 31st of January Bachigong fell in the early hours of the 31st of January, enabling the Japanese to encircle the eastern flank of the Paso positions. Meanwhile, Coppitz ordered the Ambonese Nil Company at Erie to take up a position at Kudamati, which appeared prone to attack. At noon on 31 January, Coppitz moved his headquarters from Harlong to Lattery, closer to Paso. Telephone communications between Coppitz and his subordinates, including Lieutenant Colonel Scott, ceased when the Japanese cut the lines. The Japanese force which had landed at Hitu Lama then attacked the Paso defences from the northeast. Then, in the words of the Australian official historian, T6 p.m. a motorcycle with sidecar, was seen on the road to the west of the Paso position showing white flags and travelling towards the Japanese. Firing on the Paso perimeter was suspended on the orders of the Dutch company commanders, and the troops were allowed to rest and eat. It is not clear who authorised the surrender. There was no immediate response from the Japanese and, in a meeting with company commanders, Coppitz and Thailand ordered the Dutch troops to recommence fighting. However, when Thailand and the company commanders returned to their positions, they found that their troops had been taken prisoner, and they were forced to surrender. The first land attack on Laha occurred on the afternoon of 31 January. An Australian platoon northeast of the airfield, was attacked by a stronger Japanese force, which it repelled. Japanese forces were also approaching the town of Ambon from the southwest. At about 4 p.m. on 31 January, the Japanese captured the town, including an Australian casualty clearing unit. Chapter 4 Section 3, The 1st of February Several Japanese attacks were launched simultaneously on 1 February. Coppitz and his headquarters staff were taken prisoner in the early hours. Coppitz surrendered the remaining forces in the Paso area, and sent a note to Lieutenant Colonel Scott urging him to do the same. An Australian transport unit and nil positions at Kudamati were attacked by infantry. Mountain guns in high ground were shelling a Dutch artillery battery on the coast at Benteng, which was forced to withdraw, putting further pressure on Kudamati. Infantry attacked the eastern flank of Australian positions at Amahusu. On Nona Plateau, a foothold was established in spite of fierce Australian opposition. 
Japanese aircraft and naval artillery attacks on the positions at Erie. The Australian positions were also receiving large numbers of Dutch personnel fleeing from Paso. At 22.30, Scott ordered a withdrawal of the Allied forces at Amahusu and the southwest, to Erie. The position at Q de Marti was effectively encircled. Chapter 4 Section 4, 2-3 February On the 2nd of February, the Japanese W-7-class minesweeper W-9 struck a mine laid by the Dutch Minilea HNLMS Howden Leu in the Ambon Bay and sank. Two other Japanese minesweepers were also damaged by mines. After dawn on 2 February, the main Australian force on Nona Plateau, commanded by Lieutenant Bill Jenkins, was in danger of encirclement. Jenkins ordered a withdrawal to Amahusu, where he became aware that the Dutch had surrendered. Unable to ascertain the disposition of Lieutenant Colonel Scott's force, Jenkins decided to meet senior Japanese officers under truce at the town of Ambon. They allowed him to speak to Coppitz, who wrote another note advising the Australian commander to surrender. Jenkins set off to find Lieutenant Colonel Scott. Meanwhile, the Japanese forces attacking Laha were reinforced and a concentrated assault on the Allies began, including naval artillery, dive bombers, fighter planes and probing attacks by infantry. A Japanese night attack in high grass near the beach, between two Allied positions, was beaten back by an Australian platoon. However, a massive Japanese offensive commenced at dawn on 2 February. By 10 a.m., only about 150 Australians and several nil personnel were still able to fight at Laha, and Newbury ordered them to surrender. By the morning of 3 February, the Australians around Erie were struggling to cope with increasing air and naval attacks, wounded Australians, the influx of Dutch personnel, diminishing supplies and widespread fatigue. A Japanese flag had been seen flying on the other side of the bay, at Laha. By the time Jenkins reached Lieutenant Colonel Scott, the latter had himself met the Japanese and decided to surrender. The Allied position at Q de Marti was surrendered separately at midday. Chapter 5, Aftermath Chapter 5 Section 1, Laha Massacre Allied casualties in the battle were relatively light. However, at intervals for a fortnight after the surrender, IJN personnel chose more than 300 Australian and Dutch prisoners of war at random and summarily executed them, at or near Laha airfield. In part, this was revenge for the sinking of the Japanese minesweeper, as some surviving crew of the minesweeper took part. Those killed included Wing Commander Scott and Major Newbury. According to an Australian War Memorial principal historian, Dr. Peter Stanley, over the following three and a half years, the surviving POWs suffered an ordeal and a death rate second only to the horrors of Sandakan, first on Ambon and then after many were sent to the island of Hainan late in 1942. Three quarters of the Australians captured on Ambon had died before the war's end. Of the 582 who remained on Ambon, 405 died. They died of overwork, malnutrition, disease and one of the most brutal regimes among camps in which bashings were routine. In 1946, incidents which followed the fall of Ambon became the subject of one of the largest ever war crimes trials. 93 Japanese personnel were tried by an Australian military tribunal at Ambon. Rear Admiral Hatakeyama was found to have ordered the Laha massacres, however he had died before he could be tried. Commander Kunito Hatakeyama, who was in direct command of the massacres, was sentenced to execution by hanging. Lieutenant Kenichi Nakagawa, was sentenced to 20 years imprisonment. Three other Japanese officers were executed for mistreatment of POWs and or civilians on other occasions, during 1942-45. General Ito was sentenced to death that same year for war crimes committed in other parts of the Pacific. Chapter 5 Section 2 – Other Subsequent Events Approximately 30 Australian soldiers, including Jenkins, escaped from Ambon, in the space of several weeks after the surrender, often by rowing Pras to Saram. 
Another result of the capture of Ambon was the realization of Australian fears of air attacks, when Japanese planes based at Ambon took part in major air raids on Darwin, Australia on 19 February. Chapter 6, Sources Andreessen, Paul. Brewster 339-439 in the East Indies. Retrieved 30 October 2007. Carter, were I'll read. Beans, Bullets and Black Oil, The Story of Fleet Logistics Afloat in the Pacific During World War II. Pages 12-17. ISBN 9781786252296. Department of Veterans Affairs. Fall Armbon, Massacred at Laha. Archived from the original on the 27th of February 2012. Retrieved the 21st of October 2007. Gill, G. Herman. Royal Australian Navy 1942 to 1945. Australia in the War of 1939 to 1945. Series 2, Navy. Volume 1. Canberra, Australian War Memorial. OCLC 848228. Hackett, Bob, Kingzep, Sander. IJN Saw You, Tabular Record of Movement. Combinefleet.com. Retrieved 9 November 2019. Clemen, L., The Japanese Invasion of Ambon Island, January 1942. The Netherlands East Indies 1941-1942. Archived from the original on 17 July 2012. Clemen, L., The Carnage at Laha, February 1942. Forgotten Campaign, The Dutch East Indies Campaign 1941-1942. Clemen, L., Massacres of Pows, Dutch East Indies, 1941-1942. Forgotten Campaign, the Dutch East Indies Campaign 1941-1942. Koninklijke Nederlands Indonesische Liga. Verdediging van het Island Ambon in het Jar 1942. Militaire Spectator. 284. Retrieved 2 February 2021. Evans, Michael. Developing Australia's Maritime Concept of Strategy, Lessons from the Ambon Disaster of 1942. Department of Defence, Australia. Archived from the original on 15 February 2005. National Defence College of Japan. The Invasion of the Dutch East Indies. Translated by Reem Meelink, William. Leiden, Leiden University Press. ISBN 9789087282370. National Defence College of Japan. The Operations of the Navy in the Dutch East Indies and the Bay of Bengal. Translated by Reem Meelink, William. Leiden, Leiden University Press. ISBN 9789087282386. Nortia, J.J. De Japan's Anvil op Nederlands Indy. Rotterdam, Donker. ISBN 9061003024. Ray, Michael. Ambon, Encyclopædia Britannica Online. Britannica. Retrieved 9 October 2009. Britannica. Retrieved 9 October 2008. Reading Room Manchester. CWGC, Cemetery Details cwgc.org retrieved the 31st of january 2016 stanley peter remembering 1942 the defense of the malay barrier rabaul and ambon january 1942 australian war memorial retrieved the 21st of october 2007 susumu tozaka Ambon and Timor Operations. Japanese Monograph 16. Washington, D.C., United States Department of Army Office of Military History. Wigmore, Lionel? 
the Japanese thrust. Australia in the War of 1939-1945. Series 1, Army. Volume 4. Canberra, Australian War Memorial. OCLC 3134219. Womack, Tom. The Dutch Naval Air Force Against Japan, The Defense of the Netherlands East Indies, 1941-1942. Jefferson, North Carolina, McFarland. ISBN 978-0786423651.